Health Matters with Paul Rosen. I haven't, uh, no, I haven't got on the scales to check my weight, but I noticed I've got rid of that uh, tube around my belly in that uh, short amount of time. I feel alive again, like a little kid. I told my son the other day, when I was riding my bike, I felt eight years old again. I'm very appreciative of that, and I'm glad to have my health back. Straight Talk About Health with your host, Paul Rosen. Well, the main thing was, I just lack of energy. I just go through the day dragging and having such lows uh, hit me uh, up and down, but mostly down and either medium down and then down from there, but never really up. Well, there you go, Paul. That's Reynold, your patient, and he was having problems with his mood. In his case, he had extreme down moods as well as a lack of energy. So that would be symptomatic of what you've been talking about, problems possibly with his endocrine system. Yeah, it's flip side of the same coin, uh, irritability or or depression or blue moods. Source is the same, thyroid. First of all, my uh, we have a big family history of depression. My father and my mother, my brothers and sisters, you know, taking antidepressants and stuff. And uh, so I, I tried the uh, antidepressant. Again, that's Raynold Paul's patient here on Health Matters. He talked about antidepressants there. His family had a history of taking drugs, mm-hmm. trying to deal with their blue moods. And that and that's often what, you know, the docs point to. They go, oh, well, this is a familial thing, you know, genetic, you know, blah, 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 well, blah. Well, if everybody's miserable generation after generation and they're using the same thing to make them miserable, and, I don't and see And where... more importantly, something overlooked, which is eating the same thing. Drinking water is another category that contains endocrine-disrupting chemicals. Your drinking water is often contaminated with atrazine. What is atrazine? I don't know. Rocket fuel. How does rocket fuel get into the drinking water? Take a guess. No, I don't know. Are we launching rockets from the reservoir? Well, any, any place that either produces them or utilizes them, right? It, it gets into the air, which ultimately... Um, uh, it either drips directly into the ground, into the to the uh, you know water table, or it uh, is um, uh, uh, comes down with rain when it's uh, in the atmosphere. In other words, we've been doing it for so long, and now shows up in drinking water. Okay, so there's industrial dumping. There's arsenic. agricultural arsenic is products. another one. Perchlorate. Some of you guys will have to look all these up because I'm, I can't believe I got a lot of categories to go but through. But there are chemicals in the water we may not want in the water. And is then that right? one that we actually put in the, two that we put in the water, which is insane. One of them is chlorine and the other one is fluoride. Point being, our drinking water is not necessarily pure. It's full of this stuff and these things can all disrupt the endocrine system, therefore having a direct impact on your mood. Yeah. Anybody who's drinking water from a commercial source needs to think about putting aside a kitty to to uh, uh, save some money for some kind of filter system at this stage of the game. Wouldn't, wouldn't go without it. Wouldn't drink water without it. And a filtered system, though, it may be a little bit expensive to begin with, I think. It can would, be. It well, can be. But, but, but you can at least start by getting out some of the chemicals. But the bottom line is what's expensive? Well, the point like I was getting to. Bladder cancer or... Consumption of chlorine. Or being angry all day. Time. There's that, too. Or being angry all day. Point, point I was getting to is that if you make <laughs> that investment, that's a lot cheaper than, say, you know, devoting yourself to bottled water for the rest of your you life. You know, the funny thing about it is people go, well, you know, the, the government says it's okay. But I think it's kind of funny how selective that, you know, some of these same people will rail against the government for whatever reason and then go, well, the government is taking care of that. That's okay. Yeah, no, you're right. You have we a point. can't. We can't sit still and allow someone else to, you know, determine the quality of our life. We just can't. It's just not, it's not, it's not self-preserving, right? If you want all of the faculties that God gave you, your brain, your IQ, your quality of life, got to take control. There are personal care products for almost every purpose that do not contain any chemicals whatsoever, any endocrine disruptors. So if somebody was using those products instead of what they're usually using every day, they might... For dishwashing, for example, Dr. Dr. Watkins' Pomplemousse dishwashing liquid is one of my favorites. 
Why would dishwashing look Do you know what good? pomplemousse is? No, I don't. It's French for grapefruit. Pomplemousse? Yeah, grapefruit scented. Okay. Pomplemousse is one of my favorites. Is the is the scent just kind of a, a side effect, or is that... Well, it has a scent to it, so okay. people like scents, but it's a, it's a natural, you know, non-endocrine disrupting scent, right? Dr. Bronner's is a great um, all-purpose uh, soap that is uh, derived from natural sources and is biodegradable and does not disrupt your endocrine system. And you're not a paid spokesperson for those products or any others no, you No, but I mention. use them. I use them. And I teach people to use them. So why would these be preferable to the regular stuff we buy off the shelf? Because they don't contain chemicals or endocrine disrupting uh, products. There you go. That's the answer I wanted with that rhetorical I, I knew you question. Were, I knew you were fishing uh, not with a nice light fly, but with a heavy uh, uh, spinner. If you're going for a big fish, <laughs> that's what you need. Um, canned foods is another area to stay away from as much, or at least find out whether or not there are BPAs, bisphenol A, in their foods. Another chemical that's used um, in the in in the making of those uh, products. And again, I'm guessing some of those at least are preservatives. I mean, if you're making canned food, you want them to stay Correct. fresh, fresh in air quotes, in the can for as long as possible. Well, they're coated. They're, the cans themselves are often coated with BPAs. No kidding. Yeah. So the process, or I should say the act of putting the food in there, exposes them to chemicals. But not in glass bottles. So, so you, I try to buy as much as I can in glass if I'm going to buy a product that's, you know, a pre-made product. I mean, I buy my... Tomato sauces or tomato paste or whatever, in glass containers, not in canned containers. What about plastic? Same thing. Plastic is probably full of chemicals. I yeah, imagine. if yes, and you have to be aware of that too. Yep, in plastic. All right, so yep. watch out for those particular. And containers. then, of course, conventionally grown produce. You were asking just earlier, what other types of or sources of chemical in the foods? Didn't you ask that question? I did. Yeah. So. Where would, where would, what type of chemicals do you think would end up in commercially grown foods? Anything used as a preservative or a pesticide. Pesticide, fungicide, herbicides, traces of which are all found in commercially grown foods. And could that be now more so than ever because we have these massive operations now growing our food on, on great big industrial farms and in orchards. Well, organic food isn't grown with those things. Okay. Well, that's the point I was getting to. But unfortunately, you know, the conversion of those lands sometimes can end up with, um, you know, some, some of those types of chemicals. It's, it's, a, it's a fraught world out there. It's very fraught, but it sounds like we do have alternatives, and those alternatives are, are not hard to come by. Meat and poultry and dairy products that are not organic, not free-range, um, not pastured, will contain, can contain antibiotics and hormones and other industrial chemicals that may disrupt your endocrine system. And again, affect mercury your in fish. Once not so much, now very common. So, how do we know the mercury content in our fish? Is it just like organic food? You can buy. Fish? How do you know? Well, no. Well, what I'm what I'm asking is yeah, this: yeah. is if we buy fish the normal way we do in can, you can buy in cans. You can buy a canned salmon, for example, or you can buy. You know, fish right out of the out of the freezer at the uh, at the market in well, your local market, the, but but. Is that fish necessarily going to be full of mercury, or is there a way we can buy fish that isn't so full of that chemical? What you have to do is you have to think about what fish you're actually intending on eating. So fish that tend to feed on other fish contain more mercury than those that don't. So, for example, sardines versus tuna or salmon. Fish that feed on other fish. Mm -hmm. So sardines eat other fish? No. Okay. That's are, what I said. They are, they are eaten by other fish. Correct. <laughs> now you're coming along. Okay. You must have had too much say, coffee this morning. No, I was going to say, what, what fish is you're smaller than a out, sardine? You're freaking me out, Rod. Well, Rod, well, sard you're, you're scaring me. Sardines are pretty I'm becoming, small. I'm becoming 
uh, Ir- irritable anxious. and anxious. Yeah, so yeah, becoming anxious. You are. <laughs> Proving again that anyway, there are. Anyway, yeah, so there, that's there, what there you other... have to think about. You asked me, is there a way to know how much mercury is? No, unless you take your fish and have it assayed, and nobody's going to do that because it's too expensive. Well, I understand. I guess what I was trying to get to is that I know you can buy free, uh, you know, you know, you can buy salmon, for example, which are, uh, how do you term it? They're, they're I don't want to say free range salmon. That, that that creates a picture of salmon grazing out in the field somewhere. <laughs> Actually, believe it or yeah. not, there might be some, there are fish genes in genetically modified um, corn. No kidding. Yeah. So you might see some fish out there, you know, but it would be in a different form. Uh, that, that would be interesting. <laughs> I, I, I would wonder just, you know, how much coffee. So I anyway, you asked. So you, you can't assay the amount of mercury in your, in your um, uh, sushi, but you'd want to stick to seafood like the smaller fish, like sardines or anchovies and hen and herring. Those three categories tend to have the lowest uh, mercury content, and surprisingly the highest in omega-3 fats, too. And omega-3 fats are desirable, yeah. is that mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. All right. Kitchen products, non-stick cookware, more BPA, and PFAs, PFAs, um, uh, perfluoral alkyl substances, which are used to um, create non-stick, stain-resistant, water-repellent surfaces. In English, that means nonstick cookware is full all, of chemicals. Uh, and PFOA, so they're often um, uh, connected, at least the PFAs and PFOAs, with, um, you know, precancerous. So if you're using certain kinds of cookware, that can leach chemicals onto the so food So what are preparing. healthier options? What are healthier options? Eating with your hands. Ceramic coated, enameled cast iron cookware, both of which are, are durable. Um, some people don't like stainless because of the potential, um, other metals like, like the iron content in it. I would think too, there are certain kinds of cookware like ceramics, which look good and may sound good, but they are probably full of natural chemicals that can leach into your food too. Cleaning products, the things you clean your floors with, your toilets with, your oven, your windows, et cetera, often contain NPEs which are non, uh, no-nil phenol ethoxylates. Oh, my gosh, they are. Yeah. But you can get around all of that by using vinegar, baking soda, essential oils. Dr. Bronner's uh, can be all be used to, to clean successfully without using any of these products that contain those things. So that's, that's a lot of information. Um, I would suggest, folks, that you go back and listen to this so that you can get both the um, products to avoid and also the products to embrace. Then, of course, if you're having, if you're experiencing, you're on antidepressants or anti-anxiety drugs and don't want to be on them, come see us.